CCNA Security Real World Labs Introduction Hello and welcome! My name is Marius and I am very happy that you decided to join me here. We are going to talk about the CCNA Security Real World Labs in general. I will cover three main things here. What is this training all about? What is so special about it? Are there any prerequisites? Let's start with the first point. What is this training all about? To put that in one sentence, it's over here. Real World Labs. I'm pretty sure you know that you can find a lot of really good CCNA, let's just CCENT, right? CCNA, CCNA security and, you know, security videos and training all over the place. There are a lot of websites. You can buy uh, videos like that. You can watch them for free. A lot of great places where you can learn things like, you know, OSPF, right? For Oops, OSPF for CCNA, CCNA security. You, you can learn about the radius and TACAX, right? Security, you can learn what a DOS, denial of service attack is, right? You can find it all over the place. It is pretty easy. What I want to focus here, I want to focus on real world examples. I created the CCNA Real World Labs series a few months ago and the idea was the same. I took a lot of CCNA topics and I applied them in real world situations. The same is here. I took topics that are on your CCNA security exam and I tried to approach, the, approach them from a different perspective. I want to show you how you can apply all those skills in the real world. That's what this training is all about. What is so special about this series anyway? What is so special? It's over here. Real world labs, right? I appreciate we go down to point number three straight away that you know a lot when you when you join the CCNA Security Real World Labs series. You know a lot. I I you know I could say CCNA is a prerequisite. However, you don't really have to be CCNA certified. If you know how to set up a Cisco router, if you know how you know, I don't know, enable SSH, uh, what an access list is, how to how to create all these things on a Cisco router, that's fine. I expect you to know some security concepts, right? I will not talk and explain what Ike Phase 1 really is in VPNs. I expect you to know all these things. You are here to learn how you can apply all these things when you actually go and see a firewall, when you get a router, right? Of course, in many videos, I will, you know, go through some theory, I show you what this is all about. Still, I appreciate that you have a very good idea what, uh, you know, a side-to-side -side VPN is, how SSL VPNs work, and so on. I want to mention that I decided to include like a full, well, yeah, ASA training here. Why? Well, because you will not find a lot of places where you can study ASA firewalls. I decided to include, of course, things that uh, Cisco asked you to know, CCNA security, right? I go beyond. I talk about things like two-factor authentication. I talk about dual ISPs. 
you have a firewall and you have two ISPs, ISP1 and ISP2. If ISP1 dies, you want to switch to ISP2. I talk about a really interesting feature, failover, right? We have two ASAs, right? If ASA1 dies, you want to switch to ASA2. This is like, you know, almost separate bonus training in, in this series, you will find a lot of interesting features that go beyond CCNA security. They're not difficult, and here I cover everything in details. I think I've got three, I think three or four dedicated videos to failover, right? Where I show you what this solution is all about, how you can enable it using ASDM, how you can test it, we, we do a failover test as well. Of course, I cover a lot of CCNA security topics, like authentication, radius, but again, I try and approach that in a different way. For instance, authentication, right? What I do, I what I did, actually, I took a Cisco access point. Yeah, I know it's not, it's not wireless training, it's not difficult, right? We'll not talk about a wireless access point in details, but to make it more interesting, to help you apply all these skills in the real world, I decided to take a Cisco access point and we enable WPA Enterprise. Again, it's real world labs. That's why what, what, I, what I've tried to do uh, I, I tried to challenge myself as well, because it it is real world training, right? It it makes no sense to test a lab five hundred times before I show it to you. That's what people actually do when they record a series, right? They go and test a lab several times. They make sure it's all okay, no surprises. We want to make sure that, you know, it is okay, yeah? We want to show you how it works. We don't really want to show you how you troubleshoot, I don't know, uh, a simple routing issue on a firewall because I'm going to show you failover, the failover configuration, right? I don't want to focus on sorting out routing issues. Eh, wrong. That's what I want to do. And that's what I have done so far when I recorded CCNA and CCNA security, real world labs training, I I tried to challenge myself. And in, it's not as crazy as the first CCNA uh, real world lab. Still, you will find a lot of videos where, where I, you know, I struggle and say, why, what's wrong with this thing? It should be, I should be able to ping and it's not working. What's wrong with it? And I keep recording, right? I want to show you that in the real world, you know, it is not that easy. It's not like, you know, when you watch someone, you know, and he shows you, I don't know, uh, let's say a radius, right? Oh yeah, you click here, you point, you type triple A and it's done. No, I wish it was possible. In most cases, it is not that easy. You have to... You have to learn, you have to, how to troubleshoot, you have to spend a lot of time sorting out all these issues. That's what I wanted to show you. Thanks to that, we have CCNA Security Real World Labs Training. Thank you very much, and I hope you're going to enjoy this series.